I'll just share my Oroville trip now. <laughs> Actually, we started on uh, 8th March from here. And even before that, everything was booked and um, again that fear came to me about Corona. <laughs> because the second wave started coming, no? Actually, it was rising. Then I saw the newspaper, it was written, there is no cases in Pondicherry, okay? So, okay, my another sister is there, younger sister. She is a very courageous young lady. She is <laughs> she's not spiritual and all, but she is very courageous. She used to go to Auroville, but she, uh, so she only booked everything. <laughs> then we went, my daughter also came this time after two or three years. My husband drove. <laughs> everything is a wonder. I used to pray that all the outer circumstances should <laughs> I mean, help us, no? So everything went well. We went there. And uh, actually, uh, inner chamber is not open for meditation there. But uh, on Thursdays and Saturdays, uh, they are allowing for some, I mean, gathering, for some gathering near the Banyan tree. You know, no? Banyan tree. Yes. Okay. And then we went and approached her, that lady. First, she told nothing is happening now. Everything is cancelled this week. So, you can't attend anything, she told. But uh, she talked and immediately she smiled at another lady. So, I noticed that. That time it didn't strike me, nothing. And I went to my room and I was really thinking about it. And I could find that is some program. <laughs> she wanted to avoid crowds, okay? <laughs> Yeah, it is better, no, actually, this time. Then the next day also I went. My another sister came with me. I went and uh, talked to that security, actually. Um, he said, there is no program, you can go back. I said, no, for this purpose only we came to Auroville, actually. So I want to go inside, that's all. Whether it's meditation or program, I'm not bothered. Just I want to enter inside. Then he hesitated a lot and then again he brought that same lady. Same lady. He came. Well, what do you want? She asked. I again told her actually. Then she said, yeah, there is a program. If you come at 6.30, you can go and said. If you come after 6.40, you can't go. She put so, so many conditions like that. You, you don't bring anything. You brought only your torchlight. I said, okay. <laughs> then we both went to room and rushed up again, actually. And I saw so many people there. So many Aurovillians. No? I didn't know that time uh, what is the program. Then I met a friend there. She told me there is a drama, Nachiketas, I forwarded you. Know? So it was wonderful, uh, Monica, actually, sitting there in, without any electrical lights, under the sky with glittering stars, and seeing the Najiketas with all the fire, that inner fire symbolically. It was really wonderful. It is, I mean, I went to another world. Okay, <laughs> it all happened like that. I'll come to the real story now, actually. Then I read one thing, and then the Madhuri Mandir, I will, I will read it out, actually. I read one thing, actually. We should also remember that bringing it, it is from a Madhuri Mandir journal, actually. Monthly journal, no? I read about that uh, Mahakali aspect of Mother. It is written there, we should also remember that bringing into play new ideas and movements, forces or actions, especially in the rigid and crystallized domains of matter, has never been a smooth operation. The world seems to resist change so much that sometimes only the crushing force of circumstances can bring about the progress called for. No wonder it has been the revolutionary action of Mahakali that has been most active. Mother, uh, uh, mother appears to warn us of this truth in this short note. It is from mother's words. Unless your aim is the divine realization upon earth, at any cost, take good care 
not to draw too close to the divine messengers for their action it is like a hurricane that sweeps away all established things it is then uh, i wanted to ask i mean uh, after some time you clarify you give some clarity i want to touch me i again i will read unless your aim is the divine realization upon earth at any cost take good care not to draw too close to the divine messenger for their action is like a hurricane that sweeps away all established things so it is very hard for the human consciousness to comprehend that but a physically manifest divine center can bring about catastrophe for all that is in opposition to it that is this is what mother has suggested in her conversation in the agenda the very presence of sherbindo represented a super security which was like a vast center of immutable peace in a world still too strongly governed by falsehood it awakened a will of the retributive forces the world was not ready to sustain such a center of security this perhaps was one reason why he withdrew withdrew actually and something else is also there about the super security that day you also told i think in savitri session uh, that security is from inside no i read that actually so days are going actually i supposed to come back only on monday next monday what happened no friday thursday i attended that nachiketa's um, uh, drama and everything and friday i went to savitri bhavan there i had a very good meditation there and came back to room with full joy <laughs> there the manager no she came rush actually she told there are three cases in auruvil you better be safe that's all gone everything <laughs> that fear occupied me for some time and after some but i should not have called my son but i called my son because he wanted to come next day actually so i asked him not better not to come and all i told him blah 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 i told everything and he got scared about me <laughs> he asked my husband to come immediately and pick up me this drama started <laughs> so uh, but i became very calm after some time the dinner i we skipped actually the day we didn't go out because of this uh, i mean thing <laughs> and next day morning and lunch both we had actually uh, i became very calm but my husband he is a very courageous man otherwise he anyhow he came and he drove us uh, till bangalore that day itself so two days before we arrived so this fear no nasty <laughs> because i used to pray the circumstances should be very favorable this time after a long long years all the circumstances are favorable for me to go there and attend everything and had beautiful meditation but what happened that fear from inside came <laughs> that is the thing really i felt sad for <laughs> yeah embedded in the cells correct correct embedded in the cells that i found out then i started surrendering centering <laughs> yeah <laughs> this really i wanted to share with you <laughs> so that i can get some clarity <laughs> i laughed at myself but anyhow <laughs> how i should i mean how i should not i mean call my i should not have called my son and told everything no i should keep quiet for some time <laughs> yeah i think chitra ji uh, i i feel that whatever you share, whatever you share is very beautiful <laughs> and it's just part of the play i i <laughs> <laughs> but really <laughs> i laughed at myself i talked to mother also <laughs> 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 
I asked you, I pray to you for the favorable circumstances. You granted everything, but the circumstance came from inside me. Then now what I can uh, ask, what I can complain about others, I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because uh, that about that super security also I read, no? Just opposite. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't blame anybody because it is her duty. It is her duty, the manager's duty to inform the guest actually. I can't blame her also, but... <laughs> yeah. It was very nice trip. Otherwise, yeah, really wonderful. That Najiketa's drama, no, with the Savitri lines, it was very, very wonderful. You just watch it, then you will know. <laughs> yeah. For continuously for three days, they conducted the drama. It seems. The wonder is, I didn't know anything about it. I went there raw without any idea, so it became a wonderful surprise for me actually. <laughs> I can yeah, share can in sign language or I can use my voice, Monica Ji. What I <laughs> you can tell something, Taru, about my experience. <laughs> yeah, I love. You know, I really love to see you when you are talking. There's so much, I don't know, joy and life in you. I know I say this and I don't mean to embarrass you or, but I just want to still express it that it's a joy to see you talk or share. And it's amazing that, you know, mother has blessed you with so much of life and love energy. So thank you for sharing that with us. And it's like, it's amazing, you know, how fear works and how it's there, you know, just standing there every time and it catches her, you know, like when we are least expecting it or we are aware and, and, but once you start catching it, you know, it's like a game, like who's playing who, who's the dinner and who's the thing. So when the game reverses, that's fun too. But one thing that you were asking, you know, Monica, that I shouldn't have called my son and stuff. See, obviously what's done is done and whatever was done was the best at that time. But just sharing from my experience, you know, sometimes things happen and it's, it's like kind of a reflex for us to reach out, right? But when I know, I mean, I should know where to reach out. I have seen because if I reach out to some place where, which is weaker than me, or which I know would just, you know, kind of spread more fear. Then I know that I repent that, you know, I just wish later that, oh, you know, I should have just cut it at the root. But having said that, what happened, whatever happened, one can, one should not at all think that, oh, I shouldn't have. But it's a good learning thing that, you know, you know how people react, who reacts like what. Because sometimes we want to reach out, we want to share, like that's like kind of a, I don't know, you know, part of being alive, right? Like I'm feeling something and I want to reach out, but reaching out where we get strength, you know, like I think uh, in the first prayer, in prayers and meditations, I could be totally wrong. There was this thing that mother said, just reach out to me, right? Like whenever you feel like sharing, share with me. So that thing really stuck with me. And so that's really like, you know, Abhi, uh, even these, like now, sometimes it's a reflex for me to something happens and I want to tell it to say, you know, I don't know, a friend, my mom, my dad. And I usually, you know, I'm able to just stop myself and I, I would say, okay, let me start with mother. And once I'm done with, you know, my I usually write. Or just verbally, you know, I just think mostly I prefer to write. It's more powerful for me. I don't feel the need to then, you know, share with somebody else because I feel it's it's a very complete thing in itself and it's beautiful. And a lot of times, even when I'm not looking for any solutions or a new angle, I just want to simply share. You know how it's like we just want to crib or we just want to say this happened and stuff. Suddenly I see things in a new light. And of course, I don't have to say this 
who either you or monica but i was just sharing that it's so beautiful that how mother always shows new angles when they are needed of course so yeah and you are very correct that time no i completely forgot about everything only oh my god here because on all those four days there is no mask nothing no thought about corona very free movement and a uh, completely out of world that time actually so i can't say any excuse for this because maybe i would have received as a shock but that is the lame excuse i can say as you said i should become i mean quiet and calm and remember mother and sit for some time and then act but i immediately reacted that is the thing yeah. actually you didn't react i think the fear reacts right like the emotions react. reacts like so and it then it is coming from that yeah. outer mind no outer yeah. mind and vital yeah mm-hmm. i can see after <laughs> after two uh, one or two days i can see visibly i mean only my outer mind and outer vital reacted but i laughed 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 like anything <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but everything went very well for my daughter it is a really uh, uh, new birth actually <laughs> uh, she attended all the yoga retreat and everything i didn't participate in that yoga retreat because i want to roam in auroville to immerse myself in that nature no yeah it was a wonderful thing my experience or will experience <laughs> and you know another thing that i see which is so beautiful is that if we don't let fear come mm. in we can live such a lighter life right like you said for 3 days you were so free spirited and stuff mm. and we decide right when it's you know when we want to be afraid or at least we should be able to decide that uh, no matter what you know i can be yeah yeah so it's really interesting yeah the wonderful thing is <laughs> i mean only that previous day i wrote i read about all that super security no mm. that article <laughs> that security is from inside you can't get it from outside no <laughs> so just opposite happened that's what that is because now i understood that mother showed as you wrote no now So the fear is inside the cells it was shown to me actually i have to yeah that is true ja i read something on uh, and uh, yes monica that's very yeah. true yeah i had read something on effort it's from the sunlit path and because i am not very regular with the friday sessions have this already been shared effort gives joy mm. yeah yeah effort gives joy no if you haven't shared i think okay so i'll just read this yeah. very small thing so mm. the title is effort gives joy mm. So it starts with a little bit thing in italics that an aim gives a meaning a purpose to life and this purpose implies an effort and it is an effort that one finds joy so this is the basic summary so mother says exactly it is the effort which gives joy a human being who does not know how to make an effort will mm-hmm. never find joy mm. those who are essentially lazy will never find joy they do not have the strength to be joyful i mean i found this sentence quite like you know ground breaking that you need strength to be yeah. joyful you know joy sometimes seems like a very natural state you know you just flow in joy but you need strength for that it is effort which gives joy effort makes the being vibrate at a certain degree of tension which makes it possible for you to feel the joy you know it's like the frequency yeah yeah and sometimes you know like i could re- relate that if 
you know when i w- was in a retreat or something mm. you know doing this doing that like i don't know even the basic practices the energy the vibration in the body is different like the receptivity is different as if you are you know this this less of wall around you right? yeah so that was again very nice it is only effort in whatever domain it be material effort moral effort intellectual effort which creates in the being certain vibrations which enable you to get connected with universal vibrations and it is this that gives joy it is effort which pulls you out of inertia it is effort which makes you receptive again to the universal forces and the one thing above all which spontaneously gives joy even to those who do not practice yoga who have no spiritual aspiration who lead quite an ordinary life is the exchange of forces with universal forces you know we we see it so beautifully in children right like when they are just just running and running and running and it's like shocking that how can you not just fall with exhaustion you know how mother says that because they are connected and they are just in it 100% yeah. how beautiful it is to see that so monica says feels like almost like we are gymming a muscle growing stronger from within uh, the message has gone i don't know how to go to chat on my phone sorry so people do not know this they would not be able to tell you that it is due to this but so it is yeah yeah correct so the, this is it so this is from the sunlit path effort give joy uh, the, the effort itself is a progress no actually yeah mm. yeah i feel like that the effort itself will give you a feeling you are progressing and you know it's so amazing that yet you know like mother also says that just doing chores you know like just that like we have this habit of just being active like that is also mm. counter it works down yeah. and yet she says effort gives joy like how everything you know depends on i think the center from which you are operating maybe yeah Yeah. attitude yeah. yeah yeah so monica says that we are yeah. always wanting to do effort to achieve a result yeah mm-hmm. and that's what changes the game like not just mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. but the effort itself is joy yeah effort itself yeah karam hi phal hai and also that uh, wording slow about us uh, so mother told yeah i will read it okay unless your aim is the divine realization upon earth it means you should not have any personal motive no only that ah uh, yeah at any cost take good care not to draw too close to the divine messengers for the reaction is like a hurricane that sweeps away all established things i again and again read this that day Uh, this uh, one more thing that I had read, which I had found interesting, which I felt, but I never. It was like a validation. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, if you have already discussed this, please do tell me. It says do many different things. You know, it's like basically uh, the para talks about that. You know how as a society we are told that if you want to excel and mm-hmm. excel, you must you know write at something. You have to really pick and choose one thing. 
so, in which you can put all your energy right like if you want to excel in tennis just play tennis and stuff so mother says this is not what i think that is all i can say my experience is different i believe there are general faculties and that it is much more important to acquire these than to specialize you know unless naturally you want to be say like madam curie who wanted to develop a certain science you find something new for that you have to concentrate but still once it's discovered you can stop you know from that and then go towards widening your mind so again there's a big para and after that it's like widening makes one's mind supple and you know increases your understanding that how we are always told ke you know for a kid say make him do six things and whatever he is excelling at just you know drop the five things like yeah. again everything towards the result trying yeah. to hand that many things running yeah. horizons yeah and also recently they found out no you have to yeah, i mean try new new things then only your brain will be always uh, that uh, what is that that new neuron cells will grow it seems <laughs> okay yeah. wow i yeah. didn't know that yeah yeah neural <laughs> plasticity that, yeah yeah neuroplasticity yeah, yes new new things you have to whether you are i mean uh, focusing it i mean getting success or not but you have to develop your new new skills it seems actually mm-hmm. mother told it long back she yeah, is like yeah. that only even at a young age you know she used yeah. to be like that yeah yeah because you know mother in this yeah. only says that i was always told i would never be good at anything imagine yeah. like <laughs> that so funny i studied i did painting i did music and besides was busy with other things still and i was told my music wouldn't be up to much my painting wouldn't be worthwhile and my studies would be incomplete probably it is true but still i have found that this has its advantages those very advantages i am speaking about of widening making supples one mind and understand correct you know with what you shared it feels that how with everything we come back to from where we started yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm using the phone for the first time for skype this another like there's something called pj is there somebody else who is also here is uh, like if they want to share maybe this would be a good uh, thing yeah. 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 Oh, yeah oh okay but i am in the i am in the kitchen making noise so i am keeping mute and video off <laughs> i'm busy making gajar matar ki sabji and listening to you <laughs> you can share from that itself <laughs> I think for me even cooking is meditative. I use it as a meditative tool where I stay silent. Yeah, sure. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And you know, uh, Taru, the food turns out excellent on the days I do that. Excellent. No, I. And he keeps saying, "Arey, itna acha kaise? Itna acha keep quiet." <laughs> you know, Josna ji, that reminded me. I have a. <coughs> uh like i don't know bhabhi you know my uh, cousin brother's wife and once i had you know i was talking to her like probably 10 years back and she told me 
in their family they used to love to cook and love 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 to eat so she told me that you know whenever i am cooking i say that i am cooking for krishna and you know the food turns out to be so yummy so yummy so i was like yeah that's beautiful and when i met her recently a year back suddenly again the topic of food came because food is really big in their family and she said that you know i realized that instead of saying i am cooking for krishna i say krishna is cooking and now the flavor is like divine so you know how i don't know it was funny also it was cute also and it was a bit i don't know moving also that the bhav yeah. in itself is so beautiful and how we keep changing and suddenly with one thing here and there the whole essence of yeah. the thing changes i always ask mother i say mother take me as an instrument you cook i do the shaking and the masalas and then you first eat so that it is fit for you and then let everyone have so i feel i mean i started this about 4 5 years ago and now since 2 years i've intensified it because i'm cooking more but uh, it's a dramatic difference i mean uh, uh, i don't know many mantras and shlokas and nothing being on mother's path i'm a total nut Uh, but i i only know the gayatri mantra which also i realize i don't say but i keep chanting for ma and the food is good very simple simply made but uh, then i realize that in whatever we do when i paint i tell mother i say to mother ki ma make me you paint and i'm i'm just moving my hands and those paintings turn out stunning actually that's so, so somewhere nice somewhere something does work cuz i feel that we are so so drowned in our daily day to day stuff that otherwise if we don't invoke them or ask them or rather beg them i don't think it works out but then now it's like become like a routine you keep asking <laughs> yeah and that is so one shloka is there annapurna ashtakam it is yeah daily prayer towards annapurani to give good food to nourish us and after that adi shankara ras not not this food but that wisdom uh, he begged for that wisdom divine wisdom yeah, that is the real food he will finish like that uh, first uh, in the beginning when i used to go to ashram no that in the dining hall that mother is sitting in the chair i used to chant that <laughs> annapurna ashram towards mother in the beginning actually <laughs> in the dining room in the silent room there is one photograph of mother where she looks little firingly at you i don't know if any of you have noticed yeah Very yeah the stern look she has yeah stern look and yeah. um, i in the initial phase about 30 years ago 25 years i used to look at her and it was as if your mother is scolding you eat properly not a drop there even if it is blind bland or anything the dahi is more you keep quiet and eat and finally i sourced ran ran getting that it was that photograph is not there in the ashram and it was with um, uh, this one uh, johar uh, the delhi ashram Okay. So I got it from from Tara Johar, and mm-hmm. her brother sent it. Mm-hmm. It is a fantastic snap to keep us uh, disciplined. <laughs> yeah, it is in my Kunur there. house, but I don't have it here. Uh, someday I will post it. It is fantastic. 
today only i read something on eating also should i uh, share it or i yes. yes, so please. the title is eat reasonably mm. so the best thing is not to think about food but to regulate mm. one's life automatically enough not to need to think of eating you eat at fixed hours eat reasonably you don't even need to think of the food when you are taking it you must eat calmly that's all quietly with concentration and when you do not eat you must never think about it you must not eat too much because then you will have to think about your digestion and it will be very unpleasant for you and will waste your time you must eat just you must put an end to all desire attraction movements of the vital because when you eat simply because the body needs to eat the body will tell you absolutely precisely and exactly when it has had enough you see when one is not moved by a vital desire or mental ideas one grasps this with surety now it is enough says the body i do not want more so one stops correct you know this is so interesting because you know i had put on some extra kg and i felt this desire to you know be kind of like lose it and this i realized now after reading had come like the only thing i did along with the basic exercises which i was always doing was to become conscious of when i am feeling full and stop right there correct and the, it's really very you know loud when one starts opening towards it ki yes and not eating when one is not hungry yeah and not doing social eating i think that was also something really important correct like you know conscious intake of food they like yeah. helped me i don't know shed 5 6 kg in 3 months without much effort correct hmm. and also no i attended one retreat like this they taught us actually when you eat finish this then you take the hand to the mouth not always duck 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 don't eat like that <laughs> that is very interesting yeah mm. you finish the, which is in the mouth and then your hand should go to plate and take the another peck of food actually you should not continuously you put it in your mouth and eat that also will reduce your intake actually yeah monica you should practice this while eating makhana na <laughs> mm. and also no actually uh, for me yeah nutritious food is it, it must be that but not giving too much importance to all other i mean different different food food items me taking lot of time uh, of course i am very lucky in that sense my daughter is also very cooperative in that sense <laughs> she won't ask anything a salad and a simple food is enough but nutritious yeah she especially mother insisted upon you know, not to spend too much time in cooking and preparing food and yeah one more thing i have noticed is whilst gardening especially when i do planting and watering of the plants which again is life when i'm planting seedlings i used to uh, chant ma's name at every sapling i put in the soil and planted and uh, i remember 
very distinctly even over here in Muscat and even back in India in Kunur, my garden used to be the best. Oh, it wow. would uh, not a single death of a sapling. And because it, it sort of reiterated my conviction that because of chanting, nothing died. They all flowered and they all reaped so well that I did it every year. You know, twice a year we have planting. And I wouldn't let the gardener do it. When I would tell him that, you know, Balanana, come on, you also say your own mantra. He would laugh at me. He said, how many times do you want me to say there are thousand? So uh, I realized it works. It uh, yeah. she does some magic. And also in uh, this Savitri session, Monica, you shared, no, actually. And uh, what is that? <clears throat> Not to, I mean, remember about uh, so many things instead of that. Uh, something very particularly I noted now I forgot actually. Um, to control the thoughts, you do something. It's a very nice thing to watch it again. <laughs> I got that now. Uh, in fact, what you sent today, Monica, the what mother says, right? Peace, peace, peace. Yeah. Yeah. So I was. Uh, that's the. Uh, that's a little poster that has been. Uh, it has been there for years in the Bangalore ashram. And every time that I walk in, every time I read that, it's such a beautiful uh, saying. I mean, the entire uh, writing of it. So it was a really nice message this morning again from. Uh, and due to COVID, uh, obviously it has been shut for quite some time, but I think they've just opened it. And so thank you for that. So, Chitra ji, yeah. Do you want to share anything, and then we can, then we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually I shared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, if not anything, I think then let's yeah. end the session. Yeah. yeah. You take that honey and the uh, turmeric and pepper, no? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice sharing. Yeah. Bye, Monica.